Hey, what's happening there, home brewing buddies? Welcome to video number nine in the American Home Brewer instructional video series. This video is titled, How to Use a Hydrometer and Siphon Syringe. This presentation will help you understand how these tools are used in beer brewing and explain the proper usage of these tools to help you become a better brewer. Let's begin with the hydrometer. The hydrometer we know today was originally invented sometime in the fourth or fifth century, but it was perfected by a guy named Baum in 1768. A hydrometer is a test instrument, usually made out of glass, with one or more scales in the neck. It's weighted with a lead bulb at the bottom, which allows it to float upright in liquid. A hydrometer is used to measure the density of a liquid. In other words, it measures all the undissolved stuff in liquids. Hydrometers are used to measure the density of many different types of liquids, including beer, wine, hard liquor, milk, acids, and even antifreeze. Because the density of these various liquids is so different, there are many types of hydrometers available. There's no one-size-fits-all hydrometer. Now, there can be one or more readable scales in the neck of a hydrometer. If a beer hydrometer measures specific gravity, alcohol by volume, and sugar content, it's known as a triple-scale hydrometer. As with any piece of test equipment, a hydrometer needs a control reading to establish an accurate result. With hydrometers, the control reading is taken from regular water at 60 degrees. So, a hydrometer measures the density of a liquid against the density of water. This measurement is known as the specific gravity or relative density. The triple scale hydrometer you received with your American Home Brewer kit includes a specific gravity scale that ranges from 0 .990 at the very top to 1.170 at the very bottom. When a hydrometer is placed in regular tap water at around 60 degrees, the water specific gravity will read 1.000, as in this example. This depends a little bit on the amount of undissolved minerals and other organic material in your particular water. However, 1.000 is the established control reading for water at 60 degrees. In brewing, a hydrometer provides some important and helpful information. First, a hydrometer will tell you the original gravity or starting gravity of your unfermented wort. A hydrometer will also tell you the final gravity of your fermented beer. Hydrometers can also tell you if your wort has fully fermented or if fermentation is still going on. Hydrometers also provide you with the ABV or alcohol by volume of your beer. And finally, they can read the total sugar content of your wort. So how do you measure the starting gravity of your wort? Well, first you should know that the starting gravity of your wort, or the original gravity as it's sometimes called, is always measured after the boil when your wort has cooled but prior to pitching the yeast. To take the starting gravity reading, you first need to sanitize anything and everything that will come into contact with your wort. In this case, we'll be sanitizing a coffee cup, our test jar, and our hydrometer. Now, if you don't plan on returning the wort to your fermentation bucket after testing it, you don't need to sanitize the test jar and the hydrometer. But if you're saving the wort after the test, make sure you sanitize all three items. Now that we've sanitized everything and the wort is at yeast pitching temperature, Dip the coffee cup in the wort and fill the test jar about three quarters of the way full. Once the test jar contains the proper amount of wort, place the hydrometer in the test jar, give it a little spin to release any bubbles that may be attached to it, and wait for it to stop. Once it stops, take a reading where the surface of the wort touches the neck of the hydrometer. This is your starting gravity number. Now, you may be asking yourself why we tested the wort at 70 degrees when the control reading with water is taken at 60. Well, for every 10 degrees or so, you add one one thousandths. So if our reading is 1.046 at 70 degrees, we add one and the correction would be 1.047. In other words, the reading at 70 degrees, after you've boiled the wort, will be fairly accurate with the correction. As you can see in this example, our starting gravity reading is 1.068. Now record this number on a piece of paper with the date you took it and save it for later you'll need it to make some specific calculations. Now that we've taken a starting gravity reading and recorded it, we'll pitch our yeast and let nature take its course. Normal fermentation of a five gallon batch can take from anywhere from three to seven days, depending on the sugar content of your wort and your yeast. Most home brewers rely on their airlock to determine when fermentation is complete. When the bubbles in your airlock are about 60 to 90 seconds apart, it's safe to say that fermentation is probably done. However, there is another way to determine if your fermentation is complete. At the American Home Brewer, we don't use this method very often. That's because the chances for contamination increase every time you open your fermentation bucket. 
This particular method will require you to open your fermenter at least three times, but we don't like doing that. To use this method, you once again sanitize everything that may come into contact with your wort, the coffee cup, test jar, and hydrometer. Next, you open the bucket, fill your test jar with wort, and take another reading. Record this reading on a piece of paper. It is very important. Now, wait two days. At the end of the second day, do the exact same thing. Record the second reading and compare it with the first reading you took two days ago. If the numbers are the same or very close, within like a thousandths, then fermentation is complete. But if the second reading is much lower than the first, like 1.028 versus 1.017, fermentation is still going on. If your wort is still fermenting, wait two more days and test again the exact same way. Once fermentation is complete, we can take a final gravity reading and determine the alcohol content of our beer. Generally, the final gravity reading is taken at bottling time before you add the priming sugar. In our example, our starting gravity reading was 1.068. As we take a final gravity reading, we notice the reading is 1.016. Based on these two numbers and a simple mathematical calculation, we'll be able to determine the alcohol by weight and alcohol by volume of our beer. Here's how it's done. To determine the alcohol by weight, take the starting gravity number, 1.068, and subtract the final gravity number from it. So you have 1.068 minus 1.016 for 0.052. Now take the 0.052 and multiply it by 105. 0.052 times 105 equals 5.46, or 5.46% alcohol by weight. To get the ABV number, or alcohol by volume, take the 5.46% and multiply it by 1.25. So you have 5.46 times 1.25 for a total of 6.8% alcohol by volume. Well, there you go. Everything you ever wanted to know about a hydrometer. But we're not finished yet. It's time to take a closer look at the siphon syringe. The American home brewer siphon syringe makes racking your beer or wort fast and easy. Unlike other home brewing siphoning products, the siphon syringe is easy to clean, easy to sanitize, and even easier to use. The siphon syringe is comprised of three parts that must be used in conjunction with one another. The housing, the plunger, and the transfer tubing. All parts can be easily separated for effortless cleaning and sanitizing. To separate the plunger from the housing, simply pull the plunger straight up out of the housing. To separate the hose from the housing, simply pull it apart. To sanitize your siphon syringe, separate the housing and the plunger and place them both in your sanitizing bucket along with your transfer tubing. If using iodifer, a 1-2 to two minute contact time is all you need. Remember, anything that comes into contact with your wort after the boil must be sanitized first. So if you're preparing to siphon, you should also sanitize the racking cane and the bottling bucket as well. In this example, we'll be siphoning beer from our fermentation bucket into our bottling bucket. First, locate the racking cane and clip it to the inside of your fermentation bucket. Make sure the racking cane is only an inch or two below the surface of the beer. Now remove the clear tubing from your sanitizing bucket and attach one end of it to the curved end of your racking cane. Make sure when attaching the tubing to your racking cane that you push it up to where the racking cane begins to curve. Next, fish out your siphon syringe and plunger and place the plunger back into the housing. If you're worried about your hands touching the syringe after it's been sanitized, don't be. Your hands are now bacteria-free from being in and out of the sanitizing solution. Now, hold the siphon syringe over your bottling bucket and pull steadily until the liquid is drawn into the siphon syringe's housing. Once it's flowing, set the siphon syringe housing down in your bottling bucket or use a chip clip to attach the hose to the side of your bucket and allow it to fill. You need to monitor your fermentation bucket closely and gently push down on your racking cane as the level of your beer in your fermentation bucket drops. Once you begin to physically see the sediment at the bottom of your fermentation bucket, you may elect to stop siphoning. Do this by pulling the racking cane straight up out of the beer. If you're adamant about getting every last available drop of beer out of your fermentation bucket, we recommend placing an object under the fermentation bucket first to tilt it at an angle. But be careful not to tilt it too much as the trub at the bottom will begin to settle toward the lower end. The bottom line is that you'll never be able to retrieve every single drop of beer without sucking up the junk at the bottom, so it'll be up to you to make a prudent decision on when to stop siphoning. 
Well, that concludes this video on hydrometer and siphon syringe usage. We hope it was helpful. For great deals on homebrew supplies and ingredients, visit us online at www.theamericanbrewer.com. We offer a nice selection of brew kits, ingredient kits, and brew supplies at some of the lowest prices on the planet. Until next time, happy brewing!